Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is actually a film that I saw for the first time a couple of nights ago, and that is John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13. Now, as you can see, I have this on VHS. That's because a friend of mine was giving away a bunch of old VHS tapes of his because he no longer has a VCR, so he gave me this one, and this is one of the few John Carpenter movies I had not yet seen up until a few nights ago. Now, this was actually John Carpenter's second film. Prior to this, he directed the sci-fi black comedy Dark Star, and after this, he would go on to direct Halloween, which is the film that really made him into the horror movie legend that we now all think of him as. And of course, after Halloween, he directed films like The Fog, Escape from New York, The Thing, Prince of Darkness, They Live. Like, he's gone on to direct a lot of really legendary films. Now, I'm a pretty big John Carpenter fan, and even though I only saw this movie for the first time a few nights ago, honestly, this might actually be one of my favorite John Carpenter films. Even though I can't say it's a flawless movie, like, you could definitely tell this is a movie made by a young filmmaker who's still trying to find his voice, and it's not exactly a flawless film, but honestly, I would say the same thing about Halloween, because I do not think Halloween is as flawless of a movie as everybody makes it out to be. And don't get me wrong, I love the original Halloween, but once again, I don't think it's as flawless of a film as everybody makes it out to be. I would say Halloween and this movie are great films, but you could tell they're made by a young filmmaker. Truth be told, I think Carpenter really found his voice in the 1980s. Like, honestly, I think The Thing is easily his master masterpiece. Now, Assault on Precinct 13 came out in 1976, and John Carpenter fully admits that the film was inspired by the Howard Hawks western film Rio Bravo, and was also inspired by George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead, which, even though this is not a zombie film, you could totally see the influence of Night of the Living Dead on this movie. Now, the plot of Assault on Precinct 13 is... It's about this violent L.A. street gang who call themselves Street Thunder, who you find out in the movie have stolen all these assault rifles, and in the beginning of the film, you see several members of this gang get killed by the police. So, the leaders of this gang end up taking a blood oath to wage war against the LAPD. So, in the beginning of the film, you start following this police officer named Lieutenant Bishop, who is a to this police precinct, which is getting ready to shut down. And this precinct ends up becoming the main setting of the movie. You also start following this death row inmate named Napoleon Wilson, who along with two other inmates is being transported by prison bus to death row, but at a certain point they have to make a stop at this precinct. You also start following this father and his daughter who are trying to move the daughter's nanny out of a really bad neighborhood but in the beginning of the film, you see a member of this violent street gang gun down this little girl, so the girl's father tries to get revenge on the person who killed his daughter, and he guns him down, but then he gets this entire gang to come after him. So this guy, he seeks refuge at this police precinct, but then this entire gang just comes down on the precinct, and it's as the title says, it's an assault on Precinct 13 and the rest of the film from then on is a siege film where this gang are trying to get inside this precinct to kill this guy and anybody who gets in their way. So in the film you see Lieutenant Bishop along with one of the secretaries who works at this police station have to team up with the death row inmates to try to hold back this assault and protect this guy. Now, once again, I thought Assault on Precinct 13 was an excellent movie, and this really is a fun action film, and it also very much has the feel of, like, a modern-day Western, and I know Carpenter was a huge fan of Westerns, and you could definitely see a Western influence on not just this film, but a lot of Carpenter's later films as well. 
And as I mentioned before, the film was very much influenced by George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, and in the film, this street gang, they almost act like the zombies from Night of the Living Dead. Even though this is not a zombie film, and of course they're not zombies, they almost act like zombies in a way. Like they come off as these ruthless, soulless, mindless killers. And none of the gang members in this movie really come off as individual characters. Rather, they all appear to almost have, like, a collective consciousness in a way. And since the gang members in this movie act so much like zombies, maybe Carpenter was trying to make sort of a social commentary on how when people fall into the mob mentality, they almost act like zombies in a way. And the film is not considered to be a horror film, but honestly, I would almost consider this to be a horror film. At the very least, it definitely has horror movie elements, and there are scenes in this movie that really do play out like a horror film. Now, there are some very likable characters in this movie. Now, arguably, there are three primary protagonists in this film. There's Lieutenant Bishop, who's played by Austin Stoker, who does a great job in this movie, and the character of Bishop is a really awesome character, and you really root for him throughout the entire film, and he really does come off as, like, a guy who's really in over his head, like, he was not prepared for this at all, but he's an awesome character. You also have the character of Napoleon Wilson, who's played by Darwin Justin, I think I'm saying his last name right, and he's also an awesome character. And here's the thing about this character. He's a death row inmate, like he's a murderer, and you realize that he's a bad guy at the same time. He ends up being a shockingly likable character in this film, and just an awesome character, and him and Bishop really do develop almost a friendship in this movie, even though these two people shouldn't be friends because one's a cop and one's a criminal, but but you see a real companionship develop between these two men. You also have the character of Lee, played by Laurie Zimmer, who is arguably the third protagonist in the film, and she's also a great character as well, and ends up being a freaking badass in this movie. Almost even more badass than some of the men in the movie. So it's the characters that very much make this movie work, but this is also a really brutal film, and I don't just mean brutal for 1976. I mean, there are scenes in this movie that would be considered brutal and shocking even today, especially the scene where the little girl gets gunned down, which is such a shocking and heartbreaking scene, and you are definitely rooting for the father to get revenge on his daughter's killer, even though his revenge is what ultimately triggers the main conflict of this story. At the same time, though, you're totally rooting for him to kill this guy, because the daughter is just brutally gunned down for no reason whatsoever. And once again, it's a really heartbreaking scene. But yeah, once again, Assault on Precinct 13 is an awesome movie, it's a great action film, it's a great crime drama film, and once again, I do consider the film to be sort of a horror film as well, or at the very least it has horror elements, and the horror elements in this film definitely work. Now, I can't say it's a perfect film, like honestly my biggest complaint about this movie is I feel like it kind of resolves itself a little little too easily by the end, and I actually wish the film was a little bit longer, honestly. Like, I actually think this film would have benefited from being at least 20 minutes longer, but that's just my opinion. But yeah, if you haven't seen Assault on Precinct 13, I definitely recommend it. Now, this movie really did set the template for the rest of John Carpenter's career, and this film is also what led to Halloween as well. 
because the main financers behind Halloween hired John Carpenter to direct that movie because they were so impressed with this movie. Also, Deborah Hill, who co-wrote Halloween and would go on to work with John Carpenter a lot, she was actually the script supervisor for this movie. And Nancy Loomis, who has a small role in this movie as one of the secretaries at this precinct, and Charles Cyphers, who plays a cop in the movie, both of them would go on to be in Halloween as well. Now, apparently this is one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies, and I could definitely see how this film would have influenced a lot of Tarantino's movies. Now, there was a remake made to this movie in 2005. I've never seen the remake, so I can't comment too much on it, but I remember when that movie came out, though. I was like 12 when that movie came out, and I do remember seeing previews for that movie everywhere when it came out, but once again, I've never seen the 2005 remake, so I can't comment too much on it. But yeah, that was my review on John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13, and bye.